Christina found her booth. I found my <laughs> oh, yeah. So what are you gonna buy? Everything? I want to. <laughs> you want to? I want to. <laughs> Hey, before we get into today's toy hunt, I gotta let you guys know that this episode is sponsored by Into the AM. Hey, I've been rocking my Into the AM t-shirts for well over a year now, and I honestly love these. They have a great fit and are extremely soft, making them very comfortable. And I personally love the graphic tees. And guess what? They just dropped a whole bunch of new styles to check out. Currently, I'm rocking the Paradise Bay shirt. Check this out. I love this thing. It's a great design, totally getting me ready for those summer vibes. But I also picked up this awesome psychedelic deep space design. I love the bright, vibrant colors on this thing. And all of the unique designs found on the graphic tees are exclusively licensed to Into the AM, so you're not gonna find these designs anywhere else. Plus, they just launched a ton of new designs and Right now, as of the recording of this video, they're running a site-wide sale with up to 70% off select products. So definitely something you guys will want to check out. Plus they guarantee a 100% satisfaction rate with a 30 day money back guarantee and hassle-free returns if you don't love your new shirts. So head on over there and get yourself some new t-shirts You'll probably look even cooler than I do right now. It's not hard to do. <laughs> so there you guys go. Head on over to Into the AM. Use the link in this video description. And very special thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's go buy some toys. All right. I'm a little later than I wanted it to be, but I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. 50th anniversary of the Chicago Toy Show, the Kane County Toy Show, which is pretty awesome. I've been coming here for about 10 years, I think, at this point. It's pretty amazing this has been around so long, so I'm pretty excited. What's up? <laughs> Woo! Here we are once again at the Chicago Toy Show, sometimes referred to as the Kane County Toy Show because it takes place on the Kane County Fairgrounds in St. Charles, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. I've been coming to this show for well over 10 years now, uh, and crazy enough, this particular show is the 50th anniversary of the Chicago Toy Show. Kind of amazing that a show like this has been going on for so long, but I feel like it has only gotten more and more popular because walking in today, holy cow, this place is packed. All right, so a few goals today. A few goals. A few things I'm looking for. First of all, hi, Stina. Hey, Ryder. Hi. How's it going? How's it going? I got the whole family here with yeah. me today. Spencer's up here, too. All right, so I still am looking for a Metal Mutants Michelangelo. Maybe this will be the place. We'll keep an eye out. We're also going to keep an eye out for some Hasbro WWF figures. Maybe some of the Mattel retros that I don't have. But otherwise, I'm just gonna see what I can find. It's more fun that way. There are so many people here, and part of the issue is that we got here a little later than I anticipated. You know, I traveled with my whole family today, which is awesome. I wanted to take Spencer back to the show. I wanted Christina and Ryder to come along too. But those of you who have young kids know how hard it is to get out of the house sometimes, how many stops you have to make on the way when you're traveling. So yeah, we're here at like 1130. This show has been open for several hours already, and we've only got like three to four hours to get this whole thing accomplished. It's not looking good, but we're gonna make the best of it. Oh my gosh, it's Ed's Retro Geek Out and Boston Mike and Greco Fabulous and Narc, not another retro channel. Always love to run into these guys at the show. I know that they drove all the way up together uh, just to come do the show again. Last year, I think was their first year. So awesome to see them here. These are cool. Those look like older, older Walt Disney World pens. Well, the ones that I was really looking at are too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pixel Dan. Where? It's hey. Somewhere. It's me. <laughs> it's what, what are you looking for? It's Retro Geek Out! 
I'm still looking for a Metal Mutants Michelangelo. I gotta find, I gotta find, I don't know if he's gonna be here, but uh, maybe. There's a lot of toys here, so he could be here. maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe. I'm get looking lucky. for like the, the Powers of Grayskull dinosaurs. Oh yeah, that's right. I uh, saw some over years. Did you, you see some? I saw one. He had 240 on it. Like, oh yeah. See, I still need a, I need a Turbodactyl still, know, too, I, to replace mine. Man. <laughs> what is going on here? This oh, is, hey, guys. Hey, oh, What's oh, up, oh, hey. Oh, look, Nark's <laughs> back <laughs> here. Hey. Hey. So they got here way before me. In fact, I think they came in yesterday, Saturday, because... There is an early bird day. I know it costs a lot more to get in. And also it's, it used to be kind of like a vendor only day. I've never done the Saturday thing, but they did. So all the toys are probably gone by now. I don't know why I'm even bothering today. <laughs> um, Pokemon cards. Yep. Is this what you're here looking for? Pokemon cards? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm looking at this first booth and already things are jumping out at me like military muscle men? Now, take your most powerful forces anywhere. Let's do it. You need the miniest, mightiest heroes of them all. You need the best. The military muscle men. Special forces in Desert One Team. Blast them. Surprise attack squad. Hyper strike forces. Fire. Land blitz team. Attack. No, not my terror troops. Collect all the toughest troops and meanest enemies. Metals and weapons included. Pumped up, scaled down. A pocket full of power. A military muscle man. I am completely unfamiliar with this line. At first sight, it really reminded me of Mattel's Men of Metal line, if you've ever seen those before. Very similar scale and style to these figures, the military theme, but these two particular sets right here are really cool looking. These are the villain sets, and of course the villains always make for the coolest toys in any toy line. It's the Dragon Attack set and the Viper Strike set, and they look really, really cool. And they're already tempting me, but I, I have a mission, right? Like, I have things I need to track down, and this is only the first table, so I don't know. I don't know if I want to go for stuff like this just yet. But oh my goodness, this table is stuffed. There are so many baggy toys laying all around the table and in bins on the table, so I'm going to dig through all of this stuff. And this particular booth actually belongs to a friend of mine, Pack Rat Studios over on Instagram. I've been interacting with him for years. I've run into him at this show vending a few times now. And man, he really brought it this time. I'm spying some Hasbro WWF figures, which are some of the things that I'm looking for. Look, I see a ravishing Rick Rude there. There's amazing variety here. And these bins are stuffed with just a real random assortment of figures which i love i mean i'm digging through here and i'm seeing stuff like zen the intergalactic ninja figures i have all of these weirdos at home already but this is the type of thing that i don't see typically so i love finding these in these bins i'm seeing masters of the universe in here sectars ghostbusters skeleton warriors even marvel legends and oh the crypt keeper Hey, I've been after this guy. I've picked him up at a few toy shows just recently, always carded. I think a loose one might be the way to go here. The price is right. Oh, these Nightmare Before Christmas figures are really rad too. The mayor is in here, the Wolfman is in here. And uh, you know, like my family's a big fan of Nightmare Before Christmas. Both of my kids adore that movie. We sing the songs all the time. I never even considered tracking down these original figures. I really like these. <laughs> So as I'm getting ready to walk away from the booth, uh, Pack Rat Studios shows me this amazing, weird little building block minifigure. I have never seen this thing before. Little, there's like a little boy and a little girl, like same size, Lego type figures. Yeah. And then this guy. <laughs> and then this weirdo. Oh my God. 1987 it's tandem. Like I have never seen that. That's amazing. Yeah. It's a weird green Mad Balls-like figure from a toy company named Tandem released way back in 1987, and it is truly bizarre. Uh, the other figures in this line are like a normal boy and a normal girl, but then we've got this weirdo. So somebody who was designing these building block toys wanted to get wild and made this crazy thing. 
Of course, since it's such an oddball character, uh, this particular figure does fetch quite a bit of money, even if you look him up on eBay and such. It's pretty wild, but I always love seeing stuff like this in person. I love discovering new things that I didn't know about. So I ended up buying a bunch of stuff right here out of this booth, which is great because there was a really good selection of stuff and we got a great deal bundling all of this together. So we might have got here late, but the day is already feeling pretty good. So let's see what else we can find. What'd you get, man? A Gujitsu. A Gujitsu. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Great way to start the day. Oh, hey, it's the Killer Bootlegs booth. Somebody else that I've been following on Instagram for years. So this is the creator of Phantom Star Killer, which is just a created character that's had several action figures. Super 7 has even released some of their figures. And here they are with a booth. So I got a chance to talk to the creator for a bit, and I'm definitely gonna walk away with one of these Phantom Star Killer pieces. The one that I decided to pick is this amazing glow-in-the-dark version that is modeled after the style of vintage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles action figures. And what makes this so incredibly cool is that this particular figure was actually sculpted by Scott Hensey, who's one of the original TMNT designers. Really awesome. Glad to grab this thing finally. Now this is cool. This table's got some really fun custom vintage TMNT action figures. Space Cadet Raphael is actually my favorite Raphael variant from the vintage line. So seeing all four turtles done in that style is pretty smart. I love that. That is really cool. Also trench coat figures here done using the standard undercover Donatello is really cool. I also really love this Star Trek April. Such a no brainer. I can't believe Playmates didn't do this back in the day. Oh my gosh, this booth has got an amazing vintage Masters of the Universe kids suitcase. Look at the artwork on that thing. You guys know me by now, this is something that I love hunting down for Masters of the Universe is all the weird merchandise that came out for it. Just out of curiosity, what do you have on the Motu suitcase up there? 75. 75? That's awesome. So this particular case is $70 which isn't terrible for something like that. I've never seen that before. I just don't know if I want to spend that much money this early in the show. I might regret this later. <laughs> There's a lot of great dig bins here, and I love seeing just all of these carded Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter G.I. Joes. Uh, again, I talk about this all the time. I'm very nostalgic for these. I'm always kind of surprised at how expensive a lot of these have got. Still fun to look at them, but as I'm looking through, I suddenly spy behind the table, behind the bins, a whole row of the Bandai Mega Man action figures. Dr. Wily! My robot and I will control the world as soon as we get rid of that blue tweed Mega Man and his robot dog rush. Bomb Man! Make sure they have a blast! What? Mega Man's taken over the bomb? Good man! Watch out! Mega Man can use your own power against you just like that! Okay, Mega Man! Can you stop Proto Man and Gut Man at the same time? I don't think so. Mega Man! Collect them all from Bandai! So these figures were released in the 90s and they were actually based on the cartoon series by Ruby Spears, which of course was in turn based on the original video games. Mega Man is one of my all time video game franchises and when I was a kid playing Mega Man on my NES, I dreamed of action figures and they didn't really exist until this toy line, at least in the US. And I bought a bunch of these or got a bunch of these as gifts when I was a kid, but I never got the whole series. Snake Man is here. Snake Man is one of the figures that I've never been able to track down for the slime, but he's $250. Oh, I just, mm, as much as I want it, I can't do that today. Maybe one day. Illuminators models are so cool. This is one of those things that I recently had that random memory pop up into my head because as a kid I had a 
luminator of a, a, I think it was like a Blackbird, like a jet. And I specifically remember buying it at Toys R Us. It was like a neon yellow and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I didn't even have a lot of like models of planes or anything like that. I was much more into the sci-fi stuff and everything, but that was something I really loved, likely because of those neon colors. And not that long ago, I looked these up because I had that re memory of them and I couldn't remember them. So seeing them actually here at the show is really cool. Also, I know that there are Universal Monsters versions of these, which I did also see later in the day at this show as well. I gotta be honest, these are all very tempting. Um, probably something that's gonna go on my list to buy somewhere down the line because, I don't know, I kinda wanna experience these again. They might be fun to build with my kids. There's a couple of Star Wars micro play sets here, which did catch my eye, but you know what? I feel like I'm good on those for now. But right next to those, is an amazing collection of Remco AWA figures. These are awesome. And the one thing that really is catching my eye is the ring. They've got the Remco AWA wrestling ring. Look at how that is made. It's like... It's just cardboard. It's like cardboard and, and wood on the underside. Well, it's got a, the judges area. Look at that. There's like a timekeeper clock and a bell. Then you got the AWA logos on the sides. Look at that. There's like a little. So it's for ropes. There's a ring. There's the ropes. Oh, this is so cool. And this is what goes with these guys. So there's a lot of baggied figures here as well. They all look like they're in great shape. Like this is clearly somebody's collection that's being sold off. And it's all very tempting to me. Something that I, I've really wanted is that ring for a while now. I remember seeing a boxed one back at Toy Ohio, but this loose one looks like it's all complete and everything's there and it's got a $100 price tag on it. I really do want it, but I feel like I still have so much more of this show to see. So I'm gonna move on from it for now. There's some cool stuff here and this little dino man in here, He's awesome, but he looks a little familiar. Oh, then it dawns on me, I saw this exact table back at Toy Hayo because there is that same He-Man power sword that I already looked at, and it's still here, and I'm still interested. All right, so of course the gentleman remembers me, and he tells me to make an offer on it because he's been carrying it ever since. So maybe we're gonna make an offer on this today. Would you do 40? Well, I know it's. And a shout out. And a shout out. Okay, what's the. Ohio Nerd on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Ohio Nerd. Ohio Nerd. I can handle that. Thank you. All right, that sounds great. <laughs> Ohio, I'll just do Ohio Nerd. <laughs> I'll definitely shout you out. That's awesome, man. Thank you so Thank much. You. That's really cool. Boom, $40. I'll take it. I don't have this one. This is one of the original roleplay swords from the Vintage Masters of the Universe line. It's the Laser Light Power Sword, released in 1984, and I'm really happy to be coming home with this. So, shout out to Ohio Nerd over on Instagram and YouTube and everywhere else for such an amazing deal. Guess what? I have the power! <laughs> oh wait! Oh no, he has the power! Oh no! He, baby! Ah, we've come to the booth of my good friend, Marty the God Beast Hansen. I always see this guy here at this show with his amazing Goliath creations. And of course, Spencer was the one that once again zipped right over to his table. You might remember Spencer did this last year when I took him to his very first Kane County. Uh, he's really into God Beast's Kabuto Mushis, and they are very cool toys, so I totally get it. So Spencer is looking all of these over. Uh, there's some really cool stuff here. Marty has made so many amazing types of figures here. Like he's got scented ones that are inspired by Count Chocula and Frankenberry and Boo Berry. They're amazing. There's a War Duke looking one in here. So Spencer's really into it. Of course, I'm gonna let him grab one today. Uh, but also Marty being the amazing dude he is, also hooked Spencer up with one of the Count Chocula ones. So Spencer's getting 
some amazing figures from here. If you guys haven't already, make sure you check out the God Beast over on Instagram so you can see some of the cool toys that he's creating. Guy with you. What? He's in a different build. So try not to lose the mini mushroom of the parts. Oh. But he's the same figure right here, just built differently. That's a special build. Little bag. That's amazing. That's a problem. We've got a bag so we can put it up okay. in our bag over there. That's amazing. What do you say, man? Thank you. You're welcome. That's so cool. Christina, look. Uh oh. <laughs> Why did you say uh oh? Why did you say uh oh? Because he that. Mine broke. Wait, but that one doesn't have the wings. Yeah, the wings are right here. Oh. Oh, guys, I found one of the things I need a Masters of the Universe, Powers of Grey Skull, Turbo Dactyl. If you guys recall, mine has a broken head. So I've been at least looking for a replacement headpiece, but here's a complete one here. And his wings are off, but he's complete. And I'm kind of sweating when I see it because I already know, I already know he's going to be too expensive. So I ask. 300. 300? Yeah. Okay. $300. Again. That's the same price I found him last time. I just can't do it yet, guys. I can't do it. I really need a replacement Turbodactyl. But I feel like if I hold out, I'll get one at the right price. So as much as it pains me, we're going to pass on Turbodactyl today. But I'm not done at this booth yet. Because I start digging through this bin down below where he has got a bunch of resin bootlegs from Mexico. And these things are gorgeous. Just look at all of these amazing pieces in here. Various Masters of the Universe characters like Cobra Khan. Also, a TMNT Invisible Mikey that's totally clear. These are amazing. Oh, and Battle Cats. Oh, you guys know how much I love the original Battle Cat mold. Getting it in this amazing translucent color seems like it would be awesome. I'm really interested in this. And just as I'm talking to him about the pricing, he tells me that they have mosquitoes. A whole case of mosquitoes. Oh my gosh, these are just so, so cool. Um, I'm gonna get one of these mosquitoes as well. And I really like these colored ones. Like the translucent ones look great, but I love the ones that have the extra painted details. I think I'm gonna go for that blue and black one just because it's such a different color for mosquito, right? The blue, these are amazing. I'm really happy I found these. And super shout out to Silvercon Toxic Toys for the amazing hookup the amazing deal on some very cool original toys. Oh, now we have gotten to the part where Stina has found a booth. She found Disney toys, including Vinylmations, which as you guys probably know by now, that's what Stina's always hunting for. The Vinylmations down here. There's the Vinylmations down here, all right. Okay, okay. so. Like, Disney awesome. Vacation Club? Look how awesome it's Ooh, a key. What's a key? Look at this Jasmine set. I know. Oh, look at this. Mickey's a uh, USB a drive. drive. That's hilarious. Yeah. So it's. <gasps> Toontown! Yeah, it's the Toontown one. And then what's this, this bin of them here? Look at this one that says Chicago. Chicago, yeah. Like this is a syndrome one. <laughs> this is. Taxi. Yep, this is the Monsters Inc. ride from Disney on the California Adventure. Because you're riding in those the taxi cabs oh, on the ride. That's yeah. Right. This booth here has a ton more amazing Masters of the Universe merchandise. Uh, like that suitcase earlier, this is the stuff that really is drawing me in these days. Specifically, I see this amazing vintage cassette player. It looks awesome. That's something that I really want. Though the price tag on it, I don't know, probably not today. But there's still some cool stuff to look at here. I see a lunchbox. I see an awesome clock. I once again see that Skeletor bank. 
I'm like drooling over this stuff. And it's funny because I realize that you guys are probably looking at everything else in that shot that I showed you and pointing out like, oh my God, look at that, look at that, look at that. And I was totally blinded and only focusing on that E-Man merchandise. It's all I could see. <laughs> This Kenner Batman 2-pack is really interesting. Kenner Batman, of course, I always look out for these two. Uh, this is from the Batman movie collection. They actually released a couple 2-packs based on the various movies through Batman Forever. Uh, this one is Batman and Catwoman. The Batman is really weird. He's got like these straight arms that I just don't really recognize. I don't know. I thought this was a really unique 2-pack to see. Oh my gosh, and this booth has got some Ronin Warriors. Ha <laughs> ha, yes! Something else that I've been hunting for recently. And this seems perfect because they're loose and the prices seem good on these. Although I'm looking at them and I only see one that I really need that I already don't have, which is Talpa, which is great. I think I'm gonna grab Talpa. There's a bag filled with all the heroes, but they're all missing their weapons and their armor. And I don't want that. I need to have armored Ronin Warriors. So at least we're gonna grab one of these today. Oh, this Brave Star 3030 is something that would be really cool to own. I have a Brave Star at home, and it would be really cool to pair him with 3030. Although I'm looking at this one here at the toy show, and I had no idea that the prices have gotten so high on this guy. Oof. So, I don't know. Maybe he's out of the cards, at least for now. Oh, these carded Mighty Max minifigures are very, very cool. Of course, the Mighty Max stuff has been really appealing to me lately. And seeing little blister carded sets of just the minifigures, I would have been way into this when I was younger. I'm surprised I didn't have any of these minifigure sets, actually. Also, this carded Insect Man is pretty cool. Definitely something that caught my eye just like sitting on the table here. I love seeing weird knockoff stuff like this. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. You like this booth? Yes. Love those squishmallows. Yes. Sonic is over there. Sonic is over there. <laughs> Look at, did you see who else is there? The wolf. The werewolf. Yeah, he's just Look. Missing, he's just missing his snout. Oh, the snout's missing. Oh. Ah, so Spencer has found a booth that's got a bunch of Ben 10 figures, and he's totally geeking out, and it's real fun to watch him doing that. A lot of these are things that we haven't seen before and that he doesn't have already in his personal collection. The problem is, is that the prices are a bit high on all of these. Just some of those single carded figures were $40 a piece, and that's hard to justify when it's for my nine-year-old to rip open and play with. Um, so I told him we should move on from these and hopefully we can find better deals on some Ben 10 figures that could be played with a little bit later. And he was a little bummed out, but he understood. And then just as we're walking away, something pretty awesome happens with such amazing timing. Uh, whoa, what is that? You are, aren't you? Goof! <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good, good. He's excited. What do you say, man? Yeah, absolutely. Holy good. cow. Glad we ran into you. The awesome Mark Bitters right here. Delivering, delivering magic. Thanks, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Look at Goop. So it's my good friend, Mark Bitters, the Bitter Marks podcast. Uh, he ran into us right after we hit that booth and he had something for Spencer. He found some baggied Ben 10 figures at a recent garage sale and he brought them and he asked if he could give them to Spencer. What a hero, man. <laughs> right after we just saw those ones that were too expensive and boom, Spencer gets a bag full of Ben 10 figures. What an amazing gesture, Mark. You are the man, dude. Thank you. And then it's like the good luck just keeps happening for Spencer because the next booth that we come across has got even more Ben 10 goodness. First of all, we're looking at all of these Lego Ben 10 figures that I didn't even know existed. They're totally done in the style of like Bionicle, so they're the larger figures. So Spencer's looking at these and he thinks they're awesome. And that's when the dealer walks up and recognizes both of us and says, hey, Spencer, you like Ben 10, right? Come look at these! And he pulls out another bin with some of the mini Ben 10 figures, the ones with the swappable parts. And we walk away with two more small bags of Ben 10 figures. Man, Spencer is getting the hookup today! Hey Spencer, huh? do you know what this is? Uh, okay. Just wanted, to, I was just testing you to make sure you knew that that was a phone. I've seen a phone like this before. Oh, you have where? On my 
You don't remember where? But you've seen one like this before. Yeah. Ah, uh, the TMNT Next Mutation Mutant Marauder. Ah, uh, this is awesome. And I don't run into a lot of Next Mutation things, especially the vehicles like this these days. And I'm a sucker for all of the variations on the turtle van. So I'm looking at the Mutant Marauder and it does look pretty cool. If anything, the box art looks really great. It's open, but that would be okay. Um, so I'm kind of debating it, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna grab this just yet. In this booth, I also spot this amazing, clearly knocked off Castle Grayskull playset. It's a smaller little playset, obvious inspirations from Castle Grayskull. Uh, it says Chatmay on the bottom. I love Chatmay stuff. So this is something that I definitely ask about. Price on it is 10 bucks. I'm gonna walk away with this for 10 bucks. Now the dealer says, you gotta figure out what it is though. So we're gonna figure out exactly what it is. It's Captain Planet versus a shark. Are you talking about shark? And this shark too. <laughs> that's when the shark, that's when the shark makes his comeback. Uh, you now I have a hook hand, Captain Planet. <laughs> All right, so just as I feared, we have reached the end of the day and we've got a whole massive building that we didn't even get a chance to look through yet, which is kind of like the main building. Um, so we're going to quickly run through there just to see if anything stands out real quick. I know vendors are starting to pack up already, which makes me anxious, but we got to run through it. We got to see what we can find. Spencer, what? I think we got here too late today, didn't we? Yeah. We have so much we didn't see and it's all closing. <laughs> we got some good stuff though, right? Bumble. We're still going to, we're still going to squeeze out as much as we can before they kick us out of here. Yeah. Bumble. And right when I walk in the door, there's this giant box of Tarzan figures. I've never seen this giant Trend Masters Tarzan box set. I love that I just keep seeing weird Trend Masters Tarzan toys. This box set's awesome. I can't believe I didn't buy it. <laughs> Here's some more carded Mortal Kombat figures, which is pretty cool to see. Oh, and some baggied Mighty Max toys, including this one, which is called Battle Cat. Yeah, there's Mattel reusing some of their trademarked names. That one is tempting. I definitely like, gotta get the Battle Cat Mighty Max set, right? So we walk upon a booth that just has tons of loose figures laying everywhere. Like all, the whole booth is like covered in just loose toys. And we're looking at a pile of Ninja Turtles. And what do I spy lying upon that pile? A Metal Mutants Michelangelo, minus all of his armor. So no accessories, no armor, and I specifically made the point that if I was gonna buy this guy, I probably wanted to get one complete or at least near complete, because it's gonna be so hard to track down all the armored bits for these guys, and the armor is what makes them cool. But this dealer's running a sale right now because it's the end of the show. He's doing like a discount if you buy multiple figures. I guess, I guess I'm just gonna buy this. It feels, feels like a, Hollow victory though, it's not exactly what I wanted. <laughs> oh, there's this large lot of Power Rangers figures with the command center. And as somebody who loves play sets, that, that command center is suddenly appealing to me. I know the Rangers hype is a bit high right now. We just watched the new Netflix special. The kids loved it. I got a lot, a big kick out of it. Uh, so this command center is really cool. I don't know, I, I definitely don't have a place for that. <laughs>
this show. <laughs> this show is just too big. <laughs> uh, in the future, I think I need to try to come up here and do the Saturday thing the two-day thing. It's like early bird to do the Saturday thing. I've always only done Sunday. I can't get through this anymore on just Sunday. There is so much that I didn't see today. It is unreal. I'm, I'm like still scrambling out here, but everything's packed up. <laughs> I've missed so much. I hope I have enough content for this video. <laughs> And on that note, it's about time to wrap up. I mean, we definitely outstayed our welcome, I think. I mean, not, not that people are kicking us out or anything, but it's past closing time and all the booths are packing up. These vendors want to get home. So it is time to get out of here and end another Chicago toy show. I missed all the toys. And with that, here is our haul. I picked up this amazing Phantom Starkiller glow in the dark action figure. Like I said, sculpted by Scott Hensey, which is really cool. I want to open this, but also want to leave it carded because I love the gorgeous packaging. So I don't know, he'll stay carded for right now. I got the Crypt Keeper and the Mummy from the same toy line. Really happy to finally add these guys to the collection. Also picked up the mayor and the werewolf from that original Nightmare Before Christmas toy line. Like I said, I, these weren't on my radar before, but having them in hand, I love they feel like they could fit in with Ghostbusters from Kenner and stuff. I kind of want to track down more of these now. Spencer got a Goo Jitsu figure, which was gifted to him by the amazing Pack Rat Studios. Of course, he wanted me to show that off here because he's pretty proud of it. I got a Ronin Warriors Talpa figure, which is awesome. Although after I got it home, I realized it's missing uh, one of the little pieces on the front of the helmet. Dang it. Christina got a whole set of Vinylmations. She was so very happy with this. We also got Ghostbusters X-Cop because Spencer thought he was so cool and I couldn't turn down an awesome Kenner Ghostbusters figure. We got some Kabuto Mushi toys from God Beast. And of course, Spencer got hooked up with a whole bunch of Ben 10 figures. And that wasn't even the end of the hookups because he and Ryder were both given these amazing plush Godzilla brothers from the awesome dudes over at Half-Baked Fantasy, another great Instagram page that I will link down below. Thank you guys. I got this Metal Mutants Mikey, but he doesn't have any armor or weapons. Ha! Ah, <laughs> not quite there yet. I also picked up Ravishing Rick Rude and the Big Boss Man from the Hasbro WWF line, so some more wrestlers to play with with my kids. Glad I found these. I got this awesome resin bootleg mosquito from Mexico with the great blue and black color scheme. And to go with him, I got this gorgeous translucent battle cat. I love the smoky translucent gray armor that goes on him. Oh my God, he is amazing. One of my favorite things that I picked up. I also got the 1984 laser light power sword, which I'm so happy to have in my collection. Also, I do have the blue He-Man shield that is sometimes packaged with this. So that's pretty great. I can pair those up now. And finally, I got that Grayskull knockoff playset from Chatmay, which I did find out is from the Beast Raider toy line. The actual name of it is the Savage Dungeon. And I totally remember this line. Came out in the early 2000s around the same time as 2002's He-Man toy line launched. So they're clear inspirations. I even had some of the figures back then, but I never had this playset. It is really cool and I'm glad to have it. So there you guys go. It felt a little rushed, but overall, I feel like it was a very successful Chicago toy show. It was a lot of fun. I had a blast hanging out with the kids and Christina. I'm really glad they got to come. Also, I gotta say, I ran into so many cool people. I had a lot of amazing conversations. I took so many photos for people. I even signed a bunch of books. People brought copies of their, their He-Man guide and asked me to sign it, which I couldn't believe they were lugging those around just hoping to run into me. So. Thank you all just for making my day feel so special, just adding that little bit of extra magic to an already amazing show. I really appreciate all of you guys. It was a really, really good day. 
And I want to thank all of you guys for watching the toy hunt videos. I've been having a lot of fun putting these together and telling the stories of my hunting excursions. Shout out to all of my supporters over on Patreon, the names you see scrolling on the screen right now. If you're in a position to help out the channel, check it out for just $1. You can add your name to the list and you get some perks like early access to videos like this one. Otherwise, I appreciate all of you, no matter how you choose to support the channel, even if it's just by watching these videos, you're all amazing. Thank you so much. And until next time, my friends.